So everybody, welcome. We had one request. Somebody asked, what is the difference between botanical art, botanical illustration, botanical painting, still life painting, scientific illustration? And I've done talks on this topic before. So I um, pulled out an old presentation and revised it a little bit, but a lot of the stuff is is not new, which is great because a lot of the slides are, are images from the 1700s. So it doesn't really change. Um, botanical art has been around a long time and been used for many, many purposes over the years. So I thought I'd give us a, a quick slideshow showing us the differences. Uh, and I call it the hows and whys of botanical illustration. And um, so he, these are two images of mine from several years ago. On the left is a poppy. And I have in the center a drawing of a whole poppy plant uh, with a bud and some leaves and how the leaves are uh, attached on the stem. And then I've got all kinds of details and seed pods and things on the side, which I always love to do uh, to demonstrate and illustrate, you know, uses for a plant. So poppy, for example, opium. So the bottom left shows the opium dripping out of the pod. The right is an okra plant. Uh, in the hibiscus or mallow family, uh, looking like a lot of the hibiscuses that we see growing ornamentally around here. Can you all hear me, by the way? Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, so those are some illustrations. Again, I'm showing the whole plant, how it grows with a lot of the components and then details. Okay, let's see. Let me see, why is it not? Okay, so yeah, what is botanical art? How did it begin? How is it used? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of that, move that over. It's so hard to see it. I know. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so what is botanical art? How did it begin? How is it used? Why is it still important today? And how do you do it? Why is this not working? Anthony. <laughs> there, I don't know what I pressed, but it worked. The right arrow key, okay. Yeah, okay, so here I'm showing illustrations um, from very long ago on the left of a, a plant in the raspberry or rubus family. <laughs> That's one of the earliest botanicals, uh, an herbal used to illustrate the plant so that for medicinal purposes and edible purposes, other people can find the plant. And then on the right is an illustration I did for a book on foraging, uh, same idea, same kind of a plant, but to show you how to um, understand the parts of the plant so that you can perhaps find it and identify it. Uh, this is an old poster from the 1930s. I love these old posters that show, you know, um, a plant drawing and all the different components of it. This was an old botany poster. This is uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who did some beautiful botanicals, not many, but you can see how descriptive his drawing is and how it really actually sculpts out of the paper, the three-dimensional quality that we still like to use today. Then uh, George Dionysus Arret, whose work from the 1700s. Okay. So Arette illustrated for the botanist Linnaeus who set up the classification system for understanding plants, uh, how you identify plants by their different reproductive parts. And so on the left is an illustration he did for that. And then you can see his work on the right. I believe somebody was in the rare book room 
commenting on the beautiful calligraphy. I think it was him, right? I, you know, or and this is another one of his. Um, back at that time in the 1700s, it was the time of plant exploration where newly discovered plants were being discovered all over the world and brought back. And so this was one of, uh, who knows this plant? Banana. Another um, one from the Banks Florilegium. A uh, really cool, unusual plant from Australia. This is a woman, uh, Mary Delaney, from also the 1700s. Believe it or not, this is actually paper cutouts that she did, which were quite spectacular. And then probably the most famous uh, botanical illustrator of all time, Pierre-Joseph Redoute who really made his work, you know, uh, come off the page, a lot of details, water jobs, things like that. Oh, and this is another famous, yeah. This is uh, actually my high school. People often want to know how I got started. How did I get into this? And did I always know how to draw? <laughs> and the answer is no, I did not. But I really like to doodle and I covered my notebooks, my walls at home, any surface I could find with doodles. And I eventually uh, used them to apply to college because uh, somehow uh, an art teacher in high school encouraged me. I'm like, really? And I thought, well, this seems like fun. So I, I learned some techniques in high school like batik here. And then I went to Rhode Island School of Design and studied textile design. And we had to do a floral design, one of our first assignments, because flowers was such a big part of that industry. But I couldn't draw realistically. and But I love to doodle, as you saw, and use pattern and color. So this was my floral design. And um, my instructor was not happy at all with my artwork here. But you can see, I, you know, my, you can see there are the leaves and flowers, right? Anyway, but um, eventually I went on to becoming um, a textile designer and part of that industry, I needed to draw flowers. Uh, and you can see some of my designs here for home furnishing fabrics on the left. And that's how I did my flowers back then, often by taking uh, an image such as, um, um, this one by Eret of the gentian to copy. I could do that from a two-dimensional surface. I could kind of copy, but I could not work from nature. And I really wanted to. But for me back then, I was a city girl and I thought plants, you know, grew and ended their lives in the buckets at the local florist. I had no idea that, you know, what really went into plants and the, the life cycle and all of the stages uh, but I um, went out there to try to do some botanical painting on my own back in 1993. Wow, we're talking, what, how many years ago is that? What's that? 30, thank you. Yay, Jane. 30, yeah. So I got out watercolors, and I thought that's probably what they used, and I'll look at some plants, and I'll make some drawings, and this is what I did. It was a little disappointing, I have to say. Um but then I luckily found a program at the New York Botanical Garden that taught these skills. And I studied there. And so uh, after I finished a couple of years of that program, you can see my drawing on the right of the same kind of a plant versus the one that I tried on my own. So I learned quite a bit there. Uh, and they taught us all these important skills which we've been teaching you here all week on using value, a consistent light source, perspective, understanding plant morphology, and realistic color. You put all that together and that kind of puts it together. By the way, that illustration here of that hibiscus brechenrigia is a native hibiscus grown here originally on Kauai. What's that? Sustained flower too. Hello. Look at that. Uh, just quickly, the art supplies we use, more or less, which you all know about. Uh, 
here I was drawing on location the first time I came to Kauai. That was another thing people wanted to know how I got here. And I came to draw some endangered Hawaiian plants for a project. And the garden welcomed me with open arms. And um, the director of science at the time took me all over the island to, to find and draw the plants as well as here at the garden. And so I, he set me up with a little table out by the Makawaki Cave to do some of the drawing out there. Uh, you know, so just quick overview, light source. We teach you using those simple geometric shapes first with a good light source. And we teach you about how to mix and match color with color theory a little bit. And really it's as simple as take your subject and put it next to your pencil and adjust, you know. It's not rocket science. I keep telling Pam that, you know, the scientist artist. And then, of course, taking those basic shapes and you turn them into the more complex forms in nature, which is so much fun to do, right? And the step-by-step -step technique. And when I made this little uh, slide here, I didn't include the watercolor, but I included doing the drawing, uh, a little grisaille technique, then putting your light source on it you know, and creating those values, then layering in color, either with pencil or watercolor, and then adding color and tones to finish your subject. And don't forget to do your tone bars right at the start and mix and match your colors right away. And then, okay, so what's the difference between botanical art as fine art, for example, versus botanical illustration? So here is um, an uh, artwork, beautiful artwork by a, a well-known botanical, uh, contemporary botanical artist, Carrie de Costanza. And um, I think she works mostly for fine art. So she's really thinking about the artistic quality, the composition on the page, the beauty of it, and not really caring so much about describing every stage of the plant and um, all of that. And uh, this is Asuka Hishiki. Some of you who will be here in week three, Asuka will be here. She's a joy to watch work. The, that's her on the right, drawing right here in this classroom. And that is how Asuka does it. She literally puts that subject right next to her, looks down at it, and doesn't look up for probably 10 hours a day, right? But her work is magnificent. I mean, her work has more detail in it than the thing itself. Uh, another um, well-known artist who works on vellum is Carol Wooden. Uh, vellum is an animal skin, if you don't know that. And um, he or she really works to, for the composition as well, sort of a very artistic composition. So these are um, definitely accurate, right? But they're really used more as a fine art than just for other purposes. Uh, this is botanical art for science. Also, Alice Tangerini, who works at the Smithsonian and has worked on several projects here at the garden as well. Traditionally, it was done in pen and ink, you know, scientific illustration, because you were really just describing the form, the structure, how the leaves are attached to the stem, things like that. When you're working for science, you don't just put your leaves wherever you want you make sure you got them in the right place because for different plants, they're different. Um, botanical painting here on the left is something I did a bunch of year ago, a bunch of years ago, which is just, you know, it's a hibiscus, you know, it's a hibiscus, but it's very loose kind of an artistic and fooling around with backgrounds and things like that. And on the right is another one of my early paintings, um, but it's a little bit more accurate for botanical illustration. Again, I'm showing the different parts of the plant, maybe some dissections, things like that. Uh, here's the garden, uh, teaching botanical art. This was a class we did a few years ago. Some of you, may, everybody looks so young in this picture, right? We've done some staff workshops for the people here from time to time, which is really fun to do. And then um, again, what we try to do, plant morphology, just a little shout out. If some of you who are on our draw botanical mailing list, we just put out 
the next Zoom workshop is on yellow flowers and daffodils and things like that. So this is a little bit of a preview of, of how that workshop might go. But again, it's the same idea of matching your color, you know, making your swatches, doing some parts to get warmed up, and then, you know, maybe a plant drawing or later on a whole plant in its habit. Here's one I did for uh, the garden here for uh, one of the botanists, Ken Wood, on a newly discovered plant that he had identified, he had uh, discovered. And um, for this plant, I did it. He wanted a pen and ink or black and white because that's traditional. I said, well, if you want, I'll do it for you in color because that's how I like to work. And if you want to make it black and white later, I'll do that for you. But I'm just going to do it in color if that's OK. And he was happy. I did it. Here it is. I just recently did a new one for him last year. I, I should put it in this presentation. But you can see again, I'm showing the whole plant. I'm showing how things are attached, some of the details. Uh, you know, and he gave me all the very specific sizes and things like that. So I knew what to include. Um, other uses for botanical illustration. This is some work I, I've done. This was for the New York Times, an article at some point, um, you know, on, on wildflowers. I've used my work. This was for the peanut, uh, some kind of group for peanuts. Uh, and they had these posters all over the New York City subway. That was kind of fun to see everywhere. Uh, so this, I like to show this one because I'm showing you two leaves. You might think, oh, those are the same. What's the difference? But actually, if you look closely, you can see the way they're arranged on the stem is very uh, specific for the two different plants. So really just looking closely and observing is really helpful. And this is how I do my work. You know, I get my plant. It's right on my table, just like it is back there. I make my color swatches. I, you know, there's everything I use and my ruler for measuring. And that's how I do it. That's my studio back home. I just thought it'd be fun for you to see when I worked on this project. Look at all those plants lined up, waiting their turn. Uh, when I did this foraging book here, this book, which was um, 50 plants, wild uh, weeds that are everywhere and how to, you know, identify them, cook with them and, um, that was a lot of fun. And that's how I learned to work fast. Look, that's our own Jane Goldsmith. A couple of years ago, right outside here on the cliff, Jane, uh, on the cliff, you know, going to whatever extent to get those wood rose flowers. Remember that day, Jane? Yeah, it was a few years back. I mean, you got to give Jane credit. She's like, oh, I'll go. But like, Jane. Be careful. It's really funny. Uh, in the rare book room, I love this book, uh, which is really quite naive, but so beautiful and so uh, descriptive in its own way, you know? So I feel like whatever your style is, whatever you feel, just embrace it and have fun with it. It's you and the plant. That's really what it's all about. Um, here is, you may be seeing some of these signs down in the garden here. I did, I illustrated all the canoe plants for them one time after a workshop. They asked if I'd do it. I stayed a couple of extra weeks uh, to knock it out, really. Um, so this time I didn't put as much detail in these drawings. You know, I did enough so that you could see, un understand what they were and identify them, but maybe not as much as usual. So you can decide how much you want to put in. There's no one way you have to do this. You know, you find what really feels right for you and what fits into your schedule and your time. Uh, again, there's the rare book room with those amazing books that we get to look at here. There's me out there. So this is how I did the canoe plants. I did them right outside in the garden for each one and sat in front of it. Uh, or I brought them back here. This was a sweet potato. I brought some, cut it, put it, here in the studio, and that was the finished illustration. You know, so we've got our books, so you can continue to work when you leave here, if you like. Uh, we also have programs online that will help you learn this. Um, 
we have this subscription program where you practice all the basics and then move on to more advanced lessons. Um, you know, and here is sort of showing some of that. We have, um, you see here the USB, which we have them here. We're offering them, which is our whole program, which is over uh, 30 hours of video lessons that take you step by step through everything you kind of need to, to practice these techniques. And so we have those here for sale. If you don't wanna be part of an online program where you have to log in to, to read it, this is just a USB that you can plug in and do whenever you feel like it. Press pause whenever you want, that kind of thing. And then also $500, right? For, selling them for you guys special. Three fifty dollars today. It was Pam's idea, yeah. Uh, so here's a couple of more resources, our websites. Uh, people have already mentioned the ASBA. Jane has their newsletter if you want to see what their magazine looks like. Um, I love this U, and so does Esther in the back there, the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, Palmology Watercolor Collection. Really cool stuff to look at. Um, and we have a YouTube channel which I put in there, which it's my name, but I'm not the only one. There are videos, Sam and Pam have some up there too, um, to look at. Anyway, I hope that answers some of your questions. And if you have more questions, um, feel free to ask them now. We good? All right. <laughs>